I've had a really hard time justifying doing the review on the LEGO Star Wars Justifier, as there is so much stuff going on here that's really hard to justify. And before I tell more Justifier jokes, the main thing to know is that this is Cad Bane's ship from the Bad Batch animated show. Cad Bane himself is a highly detailed minifigure featuring a new hat element in dark brown and a rubbery respirator piece that fits him really well. Omega makes her first appearance as a minifigure, short legs, printed arms and double printed head helmet. Fennec Shand isn't exclusive to this set but probably the more detailed minifigure out of the lot, with arm printing, double printed head and this feature for the first time her iconic orange helmet. Hunter is another minifigure that we've seen before in another set, with this cool dark pearl color going on, double printed head and airpiece for when you take his helmet out. Finally there's Todo 360, Cat Bane's techno service droid, not a butler droid, first time ever appearance in a lego set with a new molded element. Then let's take a look at Cad Bane's ship, and I'm not gonna lie, at first sight the model looks really impressive and quite big. Looking at the source material I would say it looks close enough, but the more I look into it the more I dislike it honestly. I do like these gribbly details over here that look really nice peeking under the ship's hull, and back here on the engine section I gotta highlight details stuck between studs technique, not illegal if you're wondering. To the side of the wings there's two laser cannons and a shooter element, and you can raise the wing assembly to see the place where you can store a single extra shooter. This is where the model starts getting to me. It feels like it was too much of a trouble to find a way to lock the flap into place, so the solution was including a clip to store a shooter, so then it suddenly became a play feature. I'm not buying it. To the front there's the cockpit area, admittedly done in a very interesting way as building techniques go, where the cockpit was assembled upside down, some crates inside with thermal detonators and a lightsaber, and back here a detention place with a transparent red wall that can be removed for easier access. To close off the cockpit area this whole section is just resting on its place, no studs to connect it, just good old gravity which again feels kinda meh. There's also a very plain cargo area where you can store this plate that has some crates and Omega's doll. The underside of the ship is quite lackluster, a lot of exposed structure and the mechanism that we'll talk about in a minute. Not that it needed to be nice looking since it's the underside of the ship, but still. Now you've probably noticed some Technic shenanigans going on and that is because there is a gimmick to the set in which you can turn the engine section, making it so that the landing gear retracts. It is kinda neat how it was achieved, but let's face it, there's too much going on on this model to make this work. A massive engine block that turns to make all of these exposed Technic beams move, which in turn are connected to these gears to make these little landing gear work. Landing gear by the way that is completely irrelevant to the stability of the model that can balance itself very well on its own without it. I usually love when things move in Lego sets. The recent Super Mario sets are excellent at that, but when things are extremely complex and achieve pretty much nothing in return makes it really hard to just for me. And let's talk about the price. This is a 1022 piece model that costs $170. I'll let that sink in for a hot second. Let's look at another LEGO Star Wars set from this release that with more pieces and an extra 3 minifigures costs $30 less. Pricing on the Justifier is unjustifiable in my opinion. Whoever got to design these in the Star Wars team isn't to blame. I know firsthand on how some model briefings are impossible to work with, and this is one of such cases, though there's definitely a lot of room for improvement model-wise I'd say. If you're a big fan of the Bad Batch show, the minifigure selection will be right up your alley, but as far as the ship goes, if you're paying full price on it, it isn't worth it in my opinion. The ATTE isn't exactly an amazing LEGO deal either, but the mini figure selection is really, really good. The model itself is very iconic, highly requested by the LEGO fans, amazing army building set and price while not good is still $30 cheaper for a bit more LEGO elements. Drop me your best justifier jokes on the comments below and I'll see you all in the next one.